Okay. Hi. Hey, hey. All right. I want to thank you all so much for taking this time to join me for this free live webinar. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Melissa Carroll, and I am a yoga teacher and a writer, and I'm really, really passionate about the material that I'm going to cover with you all tonight. So again, thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. And I know that you're really, really busy. So I want to make this workshop worth your time. So we're just going to dive right in. And basically in this masterclass, I am going to show you the three-step process to finally release the limiting beliefs that hold you back. And really, these limiting beliefs are often buried in your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind is also known as your shadow. And I'll talk more about the shadow and the philosophy behind that in just a moment. Um, and for those of you who do know me and maybe you're getting my emails or you are following me on social media, then you know that um, I talk about the shadow a lot. Um, <laughs> and I really believe that the shadow is so key to our healing work, to this deep healing process. Um, but the thing is, the shadow is this mysterious, hidden, underground part of ourselves. So that's going to be the second piece that we're going to cover in this masterclass tonight, where I'm going to help you uncover what's actually in your shadow. Because, you know, how do you even know what's in your shadow if you can't find it, if by the very nature of your shadow, it's hidden and mysterious. So we're going to go through the three stages of shadow work. I'll help you uncover what's in your shadow tonight. And through this process, you're, you're going to be able to overcome the stress, the self-doubt, and the lack of clarity that can arise when we don't do this kind of deep healing work. So I hope that you stay with me till the very end, because if you do want to go deeper into these practices with me, I have a special bonus opportunity at the end. So let's dive right in. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will run your life and you will call it fate. Some of you might be familiar with this quote by Carl Jung, who was the famous psychotherapist from the early 20th century, and he was actually the one who coined the term the shadow. So this quote is really the guiding principle behind shadow work, behind shadow integration processes. And I use those terms interchangeably shadow work and shadow integration. It means the same thing. And it's really this, it's this process of making your unconscious conscious, bringing forth all of those hidden, mysterious, underground drives and desires and motivations and fears that you possess. Because when we don't do that, they're really governing our lives and we're blaming other people. We're blaming circumstance. We're blaming the gods. We're blaming the astrological forecasts when really we only have to look within for the answers. We only have to look within. And what we discover is that the outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So to give you a little bit of a visual of what the shadow looks like in this context of consciousness, this view of your own consciousness, if we think about an iceberg, right? Um, great metaphor. The surface above the water is what you can easily see. It's what's available to you in your conscious mind. And that's what we refer to as the actual conscious part of your psyche. Your conscious is all of the thoughts, 
feelings, desires, and motivations that you are fully aware of, that you own up to, and that you fully accept. But now we know that what's below the surface of the water is a much bigger piece of potential right there. Most of the iceberg is actually underwater. And this is a common metaphor that we see when we talk about human consciousness as well, that most of us are only using a small portion of our conscious attention, that really our unconscious mind is governing, governing so much of our lives. I find this stuff to be so incredibly fascinating. So you're unconscious the part of you that exists below the surface. That's the underground part that contains all of your unprocessed thoughts and emotions and desires, right? And this is otherwise known as your shadow. So just to take a back step, just so you feel like you're in the, the right place, <laughs> this masterclass is for you if you are on the path of growth and self-development and you have made strides in that department. Maybe you've been on this journey for a really long time, but you're still frustrated because the same patterns keep repeating in your life. Maybe you keep attracting the same kinds of relationships or situations. Maybe you have an idea for a creative project, but you keep feeling blocked. Maybe you wanna take your career to the next level, but you feel like you can't move forward because you're, you're caught up by fear or insecurity. This masterclass tonight is also for you if you struggle with self-doubt and you feel as if there is some hidden block preventing you from stepping into your full potential. And we'll talk about your human potential in just a moment too. Um, and as well, this masterclass is for you if you recognize the power of your unconscious mind, but you're looking for practical tools beyond just theory. And if this is you, then I know that I can help you because I really love getting actual tools and techniques and tips. It's not enough just to tell somebody, oh, just let go. Oh, you know, make peace with your shadow, forgive and accept all that you are. While that kind of stuff can sound lovely and while it can be useful on an Instagram meme, it's not going to really give us the tangible results that we're seeking in our lives, right? I'm the type of person, if I hear a nice bit of philosophy or a little quote, it's like, great, that's inspiring. Now, how do I actually do that? How do I take that in and transform my life for the better? So I know all of these struggles because I have been there. So again, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Melissa and I am a yoga teacher and I primarily teach people how to become yoga teachers. I uh, work at the Lotus Pond Center in Tampa, which is a beautiful, beautiful yoga center, and I help run their 200 and advanced teacher training programs there. For the last 11 years, I've also taught creative writing and English at various universities in the Tampa Bay area. I've also been a Reiki master since 2007. I am the author of three books of poetry, and I've edited a collection of essays about yoga. And I also still work as a freelance writer. And while all of that resume stuff can sound fancy, uh, really, I think what can help us the most for this masterclass tonight is that I've learned to make peace with my shadow and I am still learning to make peace with my shadow because this really is a, a process and there are so many layers to this beautiful unfolding. And just to give you a little bit of a deeper context about my own experience so that perhaps you can experience the same kinds of benefits, shadow work has allowed me to gain the confidence to command higher rates for my work and heal my relationship with money. And I capitalize money because it is such a powerful force in our lives. It is such a powerful entity. And most of us have really complicated relationships with money. And we'll talk about that a little later in the class too. Uh, so I capitalized it because it really can be such a powerful force in our lives. And by healing my relationship with money, this has radically changed how I perceive my self-worth 
and how I value myself. This has actually translated into my real life as being able to confidently say no to opportunities that are not the right fit for me, that would ultimately drain my energy, but that I normally in the past would have said yes to out of a scarcity mindset. You know, maybe somebody asks me to lead a workshop all the way across town and um, it's not for my ideal audience and it doesn't pay a ton, but it pays enough. I would have just said yes because it was a gig. Now I have the confidence to really choose what opportunities align with my purpose and my goals, which has opened the door to the right opportunities. It's fascinating because when you start to do this inner transformational work, the outer experiences in your life start to shift as well. And that's more on a career level, um, but on a personal level, through shadow work, I have been able to decondition the painful cultural beliefs about how my relationships should look. And there's that tricky word should, and that is going to be our gateway into the exercise that, that I'll guide you through in just a few moments, uh, getting rid of our shoulds and really deprogramming ourselves, unprogramming ourselves from these unhelpful cultural stories and beliefs that may not actually be supporting us right now in our lives. It doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong or bad. It just means that they're not truly helpful and beneficial in our lives. I learned shadow work from Ashley Sweet, who is an activist. She herself is a psychotherapist and a clinical researcher. And um, how this all shook out was uh, years ago, we connected to co-lead in-person workshops and an eight-week in-person series to help people move through their shadow. And I brought the mindfulness techniques that I have studied and that I share with people, as well as the creative writing techniques and the yoga philosophy. And she brought her clinical practice that she uses with her clients through shadow integration to help them feel happier and more whole in their lives, in their jobs, in their relationships. And we fused these practices together. We fused ancient yogic wisdom with modern psychology. And it was really, really amazing. Uh, and I was changed by the material and our students were transformed. But I also realized that while the in-person workshops were so powerful, I wanted people to go deeper into this work because you can go so deep with your shadow work. I mean, it's your shadow. It's your unconscious mind. This is about plumbing the depths of your very, very being. And it's deeply beautiful and powerful work. So that's actually why I've decided to move this material all online. And so this masterclass used to be part of one of our in-person workshops. And you don't have to just like take my word for it. I wanted to just show you some of the results that we've gotten from some of our former students as well. Through shadow work, I've been able to grow my confidence and become a more grounded, accepting, and compassionate friend, partner, and coworker. Thank you for helping me accept and love my whole self. And that is from Charles. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Kayla said, I've learned to make peace with my inner critic and quiet the noisy distractions of the world so that I can listen to the power of my own intuition. And that is so deeply powerful. When you can really discern what has been put upon you, what cultural conditioned beliefs that you've absorbed from society or your parents or your peers when you were growing up and actually decide if that's what you want for yourself, if that is what aligns with your true heart. That's when you gain so much inner power to live the life that you really want to live. Gwen has also said that I uncovered a giant revelation about my love life within the first hour of Melissa and Ashley's thoughtful, engaging exercises. They've provided me the tools to heal the patterns of my life. Thank you, Gwen. I was so happy when I got that feedback just to see that this stuff really does work for myself and for my students. Okay, so we all realize that it's important to bring forth what's in our unconscious. 
So now the big question is, how do we actually do that? So these are the three stages of shadow work. Stage one, shine the light. This is where we start to uncover what's actually in your shadow side. I think of it as though, you know, if you were going to open the door and go into a basement that you haven't been into in like years or decades or maybe ever, you want to bring a flashlight. You know, you don't want to just barrel down the stairs and be rummaging around in the dark, bumping into things and trying to figure it out while you're stuck in the dark. We need to shine the light on the shadow. And this is what we're going to cover in our uh, masterclass tonight. So this is where we start to look at our judgments of other people and how they're actually reflections back to ourselves. And this is how we're going to dive into the trap of those conditioned beliefs that are often framed as shoulds and shouldn'ts, right? You should look a certain way. You should act a certain way. You should feel a certain way about your life. <laughs> the second stage of shadow work is actually loving what you discover in the dark once you get there. And this is where the radical transformation can start to really occur. If any of you are familiar with the work of Brene Brown, I love her. She's absolutely amazing. And if you aren't familiar with Brene Brown, then please go check her out. Check out her TED Talks everything. She's just absolutely life-changing. And her research has shown how shame keeps our negative patterns locked in place. Those self-sabotaging patterns that hold us back from our full potential, right? So that's how the shadow works too. When there's a quality within you that you don't really want to look at, you don't want to deal with, you don't really like it, but it kind of pops up. Let's take jealousy, right? When I act jealous, it's a quality that I possess that makes me feel really shameful. I, it's not my uh, best self. So I want to avoid it. I shut it down. I lock it away. The problem is by judging it and shaming it and locking it away, I'm just locking it in the basement and, you know, closing the door. And it's still there. It's still very much there. And it will bubble up often at the most inopportune times in my life. So in this process, with a, a whole lot of compassion and good humor and lighthearted spirit, we start to embrace and call forth these qualities that we have long rejected within ourselves, releasing shame and self-judgment. And there's a process to that, right? Um, through, through that, it's as if you were writing love letters to yourself. To, to your shadow self and truly falling in love with all that you are, not just the qualities that you like to put on your resume or shine on social media, but all of it, all of your humanness, all of what makes you human. And this is where we start to really tap into our power. And that leads us to stage three, embracing your fullness and integration. Carl Jung actually had a term for the, the magic part of your shadow. Because the thing is, your shadow isn't just the qualities that you judge or uh, dislike or are kind of ashamed of about yourself. Your shadow also contains your unique genius, that spark of creativity that only you possess, your unique gifts that you have to share with the world. Um, you know, the, there's a beautiful quote that goes a little something like, uh, only you have what it takes to share your expression in this life. And if you block it, if you do not allow it to come forth, then the world will not have it and it will be lost. So it is not your job to judge whether it's good enough or worthy enough or will make you tons of money. It's simply your job to call it forth into existence. That's stage three. That's stepping into your power and being able to fully shine your light in, in the world in whatever capacity it takes shape. Okay, so let's dive in a little deeper. Stage one, how do you uncover what is in your shadow? So let's talk about our shoulds and our shouldn'ts. 
Now, some of these phrases you might have heard growing up, they might have been spoken directly to you by family members, or maybe you've just sort of heard something like them swirling around in the greater collective, in society, from media, from magazines, from TV, all that stuff. You shouldn't take up too much space. Something like, you know, children, good children should be seen and not heard. That implies you shouldn't take up too much space, right? <laughs> you shouldn't ruffle feathers. You should get a real job. Oh, I know that one well. When I was quitting my very safe and secure and very boring and very soul-sucking corporate job back in 2008 to go back to graduate school to get a master's degree in creative writing, my family members were horrified. They were so completely beside themselves that I was leaving this good job, this real job, to go back to school to, you know, pursue poetry and creative writing, what really set my heart on fire. The amazing thing is that now, 12 years later, um, I, my family members have come back and said, wow, we were so incredibly wrong because you're living a life that you love and you're fulfilling your passion. And you know, if, if you hadn't, you just would have been still stuck in that cubicle under those fluorescent lights and probably really, really miserable, right? So anyway, you should get a real job. <laughs> you shouldn't cry. Now that, that one is particularly gendered, I have found. Uh, you might have heard the common cliche, boys don't cry, right? And we can see how a lot of these shoulds and shouldn'ts, a lot of these phrases, while they might just seem like cliches, they're not all that innocent. And they can have very real consequences on our behaviors, our belief systems, and how we feel about ourselves and others and the world around us. So the truth is, we have all been exposed to messages throughout our lives. Unless you are living on a desert island, you have been exposed to these various messages from, again, the, your family, your friends, uh, your school life, and the greater media, the greater society at large. Now, like I mentioned earlier, these messages are not inherently wrong. They're not inherently bad. They're just not always very helpful. And most of these messages compose the core beliefs that create deep grooves in your unconscious and that then ultimately direct your life. It's really quite amazing because something that you were told as a child can get installed in your unconscious like a computer program. And it has those very real consequences on your life right now. And I love that metaphor of the computer program as well because it, it really goes to show like a computer program is just running in the background you're not consciously aware of it but it's still there it's still churning and it is dictating how you move forward in your conscious life so when we think about the shadow let's again not think about these things as good or bad let's think about whether they are in balance or out of balance in our lives so it's always contextual, and that's what we're going to discover, is that you know, every quality, every trait has, has both seeds of positivity and negativity. So nothing is purely good nor bad. It's just whether or not it's helpful in a certain situation or not. So let's take productivity, right, as an example. Good old productivity, something we are very used to in our um, hyper-focused, productive, type A, coffee-loving society. <laughs> Again, productivity, not inherently good, not inherently bad. It all depends. When productivity is in balance, I do what I need and I get my needs met. When I'm not productive enough, though, I might fall behind. I might not be meeting my goals. I might not be moving forward in my life in a way that is healthy and helpful for me. But when I'm too productive, when I swing out of balance the other way, then it can lead to burnout, which can cause anxiety and depression. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with that modality. Um, it's like Brene Brown says, in our modern society, we measure our self-worth 
with our productivity and we wear busyness as a badge of honor. When I read that in her book, Daring Greatly, I felt like so called out in the best way. It was just, I, I was so astonished because it was so true. So let's take a should that uh, many of us are quite familiar with. You should be nice. Now, this is not a terrible quality to instill in a child growing up. If you were taught, you know, be a nice kid, then, you know, that, that's, that's very favorable. It's good to have a society full of people who are generally taught to be nice human beings. However, the way the unconscious operates is not contextual. It's not based on a case by case, moment to moment, scenario by scenario situation. This is why bringing the unconscious into the conscious allows us to be more mindful and to be more conscious of our own lives, to start making more conscious decisions that are actually helpful for us. So let me break that down. The consequences of a conditioned belief that you should be nice often translates in your unconscious to be, I should be nice all the time. I have to be nice all the time. I have to be seen as nice and friendly and sweet. So that can translate to behaviors like not speaking up for yourself, not asking for a raise, not going for a promotion at work, not honoring your own feelings or even your own safety. And now I know that some of that might seem really counterintuitive, like, come on, Melissa, of course I'm going to stand up for myself. If my physical well-being is threatened, I, I'm not going to let this silly little phrase, you should be nice, get in the way. But I can tell you from my own personal experience and from the experience of the students that I have worked with and um, from Ashley's client base too in her one-on-one -on -one practice working with her clients, that this is very real and that these behaviors manifest because of these deeply embedded con unconscious beliefs. All of it just because people want to be seen as nice. I actually turned down a raise at my yoga studio uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and that's when I realized, oh, we need to up the ante on our shadow work game, Melissa, because you just instinctively turned down a, a raise. Like, what is with your money story? So yeah, anyway, the unconscious mind seeks this validation, right? In, in the, the, it's almost like an equation. The unconscious mind perceives that being nice is more important than the desire to honor your own truth. Uh, and it's true when uh, Ashley Sweet, again, the uh, activist, the psychotherapist, and the clinical researcher who's my co-teacher in our online course on shadow work, she works with many clients who don't behave assertively because they've internalized the idea that they need to be nice and therefore can't ruffle feathers, can't make a scene, can't take up too much space. Um, it's primarily women that she works with, and it's primarily women that she sees have internalized this idea of, ooh, I can't be too assertive because then I'll be seen as a bitch in the office, and that would be the worst thing in the world. That's a death sentence for my career. So it's really incredible how uh, profound these consequences are. Um, you know, and this goes back to our sense of wanting to be validated by others, of seeking belonging. We are constantly, unconsciously trying to comply with the messages that we have absorbed throughout our lives. And again, we're not conscious of it. We're not, you don't wake up in the morning and you're brushing your teeth and you're like, yes, I am going through my day just being governed by all the unconscious messaging that I've absorbed. No, that's why it's in the shadow. That's why it's below the water's surface, just out of sight, but very, very powerful. So, this is the way the unconscious mind operates. We're starting to bring the unconscious into our consciousness now, shining the light on what's really going on beneath the surface. And this is often how those thought patterns, those unconscious thought patterns are structured. I just want to be good because I want to be liked, right? Because this is how we were taught and that's how the behavior was enforced. A good kid gets rewarded. They get the toy, they get the hug from the parent. They get what they're seeking, approval, love, acceptance. I want to be understood and I want to belong. 
This is an evolutionary imprint that is stamped in all of us. We want to belong to the tribe. So this is also how, just some examples of these underground unconscious thought patterns can lead to behaviors. I want to be liked, so I should always be friendly. Equals, I shouldn't speak my mind honestly. Oh, I can't be too honest because that might cause a scene and that would maybe make things weird. So I'm going to choose my words really, really carefully and kind of water down what, what I actually feel. Um, this also translates a lot of times as avoiding conflict. Right? If you have, if I, there are some other conflict avoiders on this call, I, I totally see you. I am a recovering conflict avoider too because I want to be nice, you know? <laughs> so here's, here's one from way back. I want to belong to the cool crowd at school. That translates to a behavior like I shouldn't raise my hand in class because I'll look like a nerd. Ah, uh, the good old days. Mm. And then when it comes to our body, and our appearance. Oh, so many messages we have absorbed through the culture about how we should look and how our bodies should be if we are going to be accepted. I want to be attractive can equal, I must be thin no matter the health consequences. You know, we only have to look at diet culture to see that translate in, in real life. And that, those are, of course, just a couple examples of how that all works. So let's go back to money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a special note about money. Because again, most of us have very specific and often contradictory core beliefs about money. So maybe you have heard some of these cultural phrases growing up. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. Ooh, that's a, that's a big one. Money makes the world go round. A lot of cliches that we just kind of toss around, but we don't really examine, and we don't dig beneath the surface of how powerful these words are. Words are thoughts. Thoughts create beliefs. Belief structures create how you feel and how you live your life. So you didn't invent any of these phrases. You learned these beliefs from, again, these greater structures, your family, your peers, your teachers. But all of these beliefs do have real world consequences. And these complicated feelings around money might lead you to have trouble believing in your worth and being open to receiving abundance. And this is where we can start to actually remove energy blocks, right? By uh, shifting our money mindset in potent ways. Okay, so let's do a little exercise and um, you can explore some of these phrases that might be operating under the surface for you. So if you do have a notebook nearby and if you're multitasking right now, come back to me and um, you can either uh, jot some of these down right now, or if you want to screenshot this screen right here, you can always come back to this and do this exercise later. I will be sending out the replay of this video to all of you, uh, so you can always watch this again. Uh, and I do encourage you to do this more than once. So for just the next minute or so, write down a list of some of the phrases, some of the messages. Maybe they were framed as like shoulds or shouldn'ts. You, you know, you should be nice, you should get a, a real job, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Not inherently wrong or terrible stuff, but just things that you heard growing up. And just take a moment to jot some of those down. This is an exercise that you could return to again and again. This is an exercise that you can take a much longer time doing. And I imagine that most of you, while I've been kind of setting this up and talking about these cultural beliefs, uh, I'm sure some of them have already been percolating in your mind already. So it's really helpful to get them out on paper. Uh, this is why we include so many writing exercises in the online course. And we did so many writing exercises when Ashley and I led this stuff in person for people as well. The act of writing starts to move that energy, starts to move some of that language and those thought processes just out of your head and um, onto the page so that we get some clarity and some distance as well. 
And those of you who know me know that I am a big fan of handwriting. I, there is a kinesthetic power to handwriting these things out. But you know, if you're typing right now, that's cool too. So let's just take another moment. And then phase two of this exercise. Once you've written a good list, like a nice, a, a nice exhaustive list, and again, feel free to do this later tonight. Uh, it is a new moon, which is the perfect time to do these deeper reflective practices and to uh, really dive into our depths. So if you're into the lunar phases and kind of working with the moon, then you being here is, is right on time, but you can do this anytime, I assure you. <laughs> Once you've gotten your exhaustive list, then read it back over and choose three to five of those phrases. Choose three to five of the phrases that really stick out to you. You know, they're the ones that'll kind of ping you and give you a visceral response. Those are the ones that have a nice energetic charge. Those are the ones that are probably affecting you if you get that ping, if you get that little nudge, that visceral response. And then I want you to ask these two important follow-up questions. Where did this phrase come from? Where did this message come from? Now you might be able to pinpoint it exactly. You might be able to trace the biography of that belief, right? Maybe it was, what do you think I'm made of money, right? And you trace it all the way back and say, oh my gosh, my grandma used to say that all the time. Every time she was around, that phrase would come out somehow. What, do you think I'm made of money? You know, and that informs how we perceive money and scarcity and hard work, right? <laughs> In regard to our relationship, to our resources and our capacity to receive. So maybe you know exactly where it came from, but maybe you don't. Maybe it's like, oh, I just kind of have this general notion of uh, if you look good, you feel good. That's something that I, I heard a lot growing up you know i read 17 magazine as a teenager which i'm i'm sure caused a lot of se severe damage <laughs> um so maybe it's just a broader vaguer notion of where this messaging came from the media or something like that but then i want you to think about the consequences what in your life right now what behaviors today are you engaging in that you could trace back to some of these phrases? So going back to the body, when you look in the mirror, do you look at certain body parts? Or do you kind of go to the same body parts or features and immediately start criticizing yourself? Do you immediately start analyzing and thinking like, oh, I really gotta get that fixed. Oh, I need to go to a dermatologist. Oh, I'm getting more wrinkles than I had a month ago. Some grays are popping in. Um, you know, does your mind immediately go to this self-critical nature? And does that spin you into maybe a, a, a negative downward spiral? So think about those consequences. And it's through this process of understanding why we're acting the way that we're acting that allows our unconscious to become conscious. Going back to that quote at the beginning from Carl Jung, until you make your unconscious conscious, it will run your life and you will call it fate. So we're taking fate into your own hands now and allowing you to make more conscious decisions that empower you, that make you feel good, that make you feel alive and present in your own body, in your relationships, and in your career. This is how you shine the light on your shadow. So. Uh, a, a deeper part of this too is another tactic for discovering what is inside of your shadow, not just your shoulds and shouldn'ts, those messages that you've absorbed throughout your life, but what you judge in other people. Now, what you judge in other people does not mean that you're condoning anyone else's behavior. You're not saying like, oh, this person was cruel and rude and terrible, but I am accepting that quality, so therefore what they did was okay. No, 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 not at all. Um, accepting a quality and accepting a behavior that was a consequence of that quality are two very, very different things, right? We are working with accepting the quality and taking more responsibility 
for the consequences for our own behaviors as well. So when you judge something in other people, it typically reveals an unhealed part of yourself that you need to dive within and accept as well. So uh, there's a great little phrase that I love about that. It's called, uh, you know, it, you spot it because you got it. I can spot something in somebody else because I also possess the potential for that quality. It doesn't mean that I'm expressing it in my life, that it's showing up in my behaviors, but we all have the seeds of potential. It's just what seeds we water. Those are the traits, those are the qualities that shine forth and flourish in our lives that then become our personalities. So for example, let's say you observe a quality in someone else, like bitchiness, let's say. Um, you can dive a little bit deeper and discover that even these qualities that we perceive generally as being negative, that they each hold a gift, that there is a treasure within everything. Again, no quality is either purely good or purely bad. It's like Shakespeare said, nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. Ah, thinking gets us into trouble every time. This is why we meditate, right? <laughs> or at least we try to meditate, perhaps. <laughs> so you might discover that if someone is bitchy, it doesn't mean they're like bitchy all the time, 100%. You're not any of these states of being 100% of the time in your life, right? We're always in relationship and response and reaction to our world around us. So being bitchy might actually imply that someone can be strong and assertive when they need to be. Maybe they're standing up for themselves when they need to be and they're speaking their truth in a way that helps them and protects them and sets good boundaries. Maybe that helps them not be a doormat. But if you're following the programmed belief of I should be nice, I should be nice all the time. I need to be seen as the nice girl to be liked and to feel good about myself. Well, then you might be putting yourself at a disadvantage and you might be a doormat, who knows? This is really how we can start to reframe a lot of these qualities and reclaim these exiled, judged, shamed, pieces of ourselves. It's like, if you think of yourself almost like a puzzle and you've got all these qualities, we're starting to put the puzzle back together so that you can become whole. It's like welcoming it home, welcoming all that you are back home to yourself. So by examining the core belief that you should be nice all the time, you start to realize like, oh, that's not effective in every scenario. I can't just be a softy all the time throughout my life. You know, if somebody is taking advantage of me, I have to set a boundary. I can do it with love. I can do it with empathy. But if I don't do it, then I might be completely drained. And then I can't fulfill my other needs and responsibilities in my life. So by examining and changing this core should or this core belief, you allow yourself to reclaim the parts of yourself that you've denied and locked away. Again, it's kind of like going into the basement that you've locked away all these aspects of yourself, shining the light down there, opening up your arms and saying, you know, I am strong and I am willing to start to accept these qualities that I have exhibited in my life. When you do this, you get closer to embracing the fullness of who you really are. And so all of that is actually part of week two in the online course with Ashley Sweet and I, where we dive into releasing limiting beliefs, going into the trap of shoulds and shouldn'ts. We take the exercise that we just did and we take it one step further um, where we really map out the consequences and get, that helps to give you this powerful visual of how these qualities are taking shape in your life in healthy ways, helpful ways, and really unhealthy, un unhelpful ways. Um, you'll also notice that this is a screenshot from right within the course modules um, that this week, week two, it also includes calming pranayama. Pranayama is breath work in yoga and prana is your life force energy. Your life force is your power. Your prana is your power. If you have energy, you feel revitalized, you feel alive, you feel good, you can move through your life with enthusiasm and joy.
If you're feeling depleted and exhausted, you know, you're not able to get care of yourself or anybody else. So uh, we also infuse some uh, yogic techniques in the course as well. And those of you who are familiar with yoga are familiar with alternate nostril breathing, perhaps. It's one of the uh, most powerful techniques to bring a state of calmness and harmony into your mind and your body, your nervous system and your energy. And that's like what I was saying earlier, the online course Shadow and Light is a blend of these modern psychological processes and practices to dig into your shadow and make peace with all the pieces of yourself, as well as the ancient yogic practices that help us get out of the head, out of the chatter, and into the body, into our spirit, into our prana, our energy. And it helps us to really embody some of these practices. So it's not all cognitive, it's not all analysis. Um, and I found that that blend is really, really powerful and really, really helpful. Uh, you can also see here too, week three, we go into taking some of these qualities a step further and building a deck, like a deck of cards, actually, like a tarot card deck, but you're building them from your, these qualities that you both celebrate within yourself and love and approve of and also the qualities in yourself that you have judged and exiled away. You'll also see that uh, there are gentle yoga practices, whether you're new to yoga or whether you're a certified yoga teacher, they're applicable for everyone. Um, the other piece I wanted to share with you through this process about the shoulds and the shouldn'ts is I want you to ask yourself, is your destiny of your own design? This is so key. Um, this is a big piece of deconditioning those cultural myths because what most of us are ingrained to believe, again, it's stemming from the greater culture and we don't often allow ourselves the time and the space to ask ourselves if what we're striving for and what our drives are are really aligned with what's actually in our heart. You know, these conditioned beliefs, they inform not only how you believe you should be in life, but also what you should want. I know growing up, there was the, the, the old cliche of being in a monogamous relationship, being married, having a house, having a white picket fence. That was the big cliche, two kids and a dog right? Um, and a lot of us are taught to, to want that. But do we ever ask ourselves, is that what I actually want? And I really believe that this is why so many people, especially in this country and the United States, are so dissatisfied with their lives because they follow the rules. And then they look around the external conditions of their lives and they realize something is missing. And it's that deep inner peace that they were looking for on the outside all along, but that they can access from within. Shadow work is a beautiful way to gain access to that inner peace and that inner power. This gives you the power to be you. So I want you to ask yourself right now, what would your life look and feel like if you actually pursued what you really want? Not just what society or the media or your parents instilled in you to want. Right? Um, if I had listened to society, I certainly wouldn't be here right now leading this master class. I would be still working my office job, sitting in a cubicle and, you know, just doing what was expected of me, but I would be so miserable. I would be so depressed. For me, it was worth it to take the risk and follow my heart and follow my passions. And that is one of the most amazing and frankly, quite immediate benefits that we can receive when we begin to examine the shoulds and the shouldn'ts that have been imprinted within us throughout our lives. It frees us of the pressure from these external forces and it frees us from the self-critical background noise, all that chatter of the world that seeps into us. Really, this is a journey to embrace all the parts of yourself. And so in shadow integration, you unlearn the unhelpful messages that were ingrained in you and you radically pour gratitude into the parts of yourself that you have judged, shamed, and avoided for years. That's the stage two, right? 
starting to love the dark, pouring radical acceptance and embrace into all of yourself. And there's a systematic process of how you do it. It's not just poof, one day I'm gonna love and accept myself. It takes time to undo all of these programs and unlearn all of the things that we've been taught. But here's the big key, my friends. Shadow work contains both your struggles and your strengths, your unique genius, your raw talent, your gifts lie dormant in your shadow, closed off by fear, avoidance, insecurity, and doubt. This is what Carl Jung meant when he referenced the golden shadow, that within our shadow, again, it's not just like the stuff we don't wanna look at, it's also the source of your unique genius, that precious treasure that only you have to bring forth into the world. So again, if you feel like there's some hidden block preventing you from fully stepping into your potential, like there's some key ingredient missing, you know, you're, you've been on a spiritual journey of growth and self-development and you take one step forward, but then something happens and it feels like you take two steps back. And because of that, maybe you feel discouraged, frustrated, you're finally ready to release your limiting beliefs, then you only have to bring your shadow into the light. It's that powerful. And so if you are interested, if you feel ready to go deeper with this work and transform your life from the inside out, then I have two general options for you. Option one is you can go it alone. You can piece together theory and process from various sources. There's you know, so much out there on the internet. You can definitely go down all the black holes of the internet and try to piece it together from different sources and figure out a method that could work for you. You could hold yourself accountable through that process and you know, devote some time maybe every week for yourself to do this kind of deep inner work. Or option two, you could already receive the proven roadmap from people who've been there and have received success on the journey, right? You can get the process and the step-by-step -step roadmap. You could receive the tools and techniques that actually work, not just the fluff and the theory, but the stuff that is going to get you results. And you could also gain access to a supportive community online of other folks who are going through the same process, these like-minded people who are wanting to bring their unconscious to their consciousness. And that is where I want to introduce to you Shadow and Light, the journey to self-mastery. It is the eight-week course that I put online so that people could go deeper into this profound material. It's the course to release your limiting beliefs for good, reframe your stories, reclaim your inner power, and shine your light in the world. Here's the course outline to give you an overview of what you could expect over the eight weeks. So week one is where we really dive into the shadow. We take a lot of time and explore the layers of consciousness from this Jungian approach, which is so fascinating. Uh, we go into spiritual bypassing, which is a practice that is really, really common. And again, you're not aware of it if you're doing it or engaging in it, but it's uh, one that often causes you a lot of unnecessary stress and hardship and the people around you too. Um, as well as lots of journaling exercises and uh, really thoughtful writing exercises to help move you out of these ingrained patterns and into new awareness, new insights. Then week two dives us into the trap of shoulds and shouldn'ts and we go deeper into it than uh, what we got to explore in this masterclass because we only have about an hour or so here together tonight. And um, week three goes even deeper into embracing your whole self and building that deck of qualities, building this stack of qualities that you could call upon when you need to, recognizing that you are more than just uh, black or white, positive or negative traits, that you are all of it and that you can call forth these qualities when you need to in your life.
You'll see throughout the course outline that some yogic practices are sprinkled in throughout. So there are gentle yoga practices to help you embody some of this work. Really, really um, beginner friendly yoga as well. And because this is an online course, this allows you to go at your own pace. The material is just dripped out to you so you can take as long as you need. You have lifetime access to the material. So you, you go at your own pace. Um, week four, we start to go into that second stage of shadow work where we're radically pouring love and embrace into all that we are, where you're starting to call back these qualities that you have judged and exiled, where you're able to reconnect to your younger self and start to make peace with your past. Really powerful stuff. Week five is where we continue that work and deconstruct shame where we start to really revision our shadow, not as something bad that deserves to be locked away, but as something that is more multidimensional and more rich with goodness and inspiration and power. You know, if you think about soil, if you, if you ever want to grow anything, you have to start with the dirt. You have to start with the muck and the mud. This is where the lotus flower is such a powerful metaphor. The lotus is this gorgeous flower, and it grows out of mud. And it needs the mud. It doesn't mean the mud is bad, right? This is how we can think about using the fertile soil of your shadow to give yourself the fertilizer, basically, so that you can flourish and thrive in your life. And then you can see, as we move into week six, seven, we are moving into the integration stage. This is the third stage of the shadow process where you're now tapping into your golden shadow, where you're able to tap into your unique creative genius and you're retelling your power story. You're gaining control and you're actually becoming the author of your own life, not dictated by outside circumstance or outside conditions. The last one, the last module, week eight, actually takes us to some of the deepest philosophy in the entire yoga tradition where we ask ourselves that great philosophical question that has been asked since the dawn of time, who am I? This week allows you to connect to your highest self, where we dive into the yogic view of attachment, craving, and avoidance. Throughout the weekly outline, you will also see that there are guided meditations, and I believe these guided meditations are super powerful for releasing our limiting beliefs, releasing energy blocks that are getting in the way of you living a happy, healthy, full life and really moving forward. Um, so here's another peek inside the course modules. And I also wanna offer you a very, very special bonus. And if you are still with me, oh my goodness, thank you so much for being here and for sticking around. You guys are amazing. And um, the bonus is also, this very special mini course all about your energy. It's called Prana. And these are really, really specific and super quick, really fast acting tips and techniques. They're practices that I use and that I share with all of my students to ground, protect, nourish, and purify your energy. Again, your prana, your energy is your power. If you're feeling exhausted and depleted, you can't engage in your life in a way that makes you feel alive and vital and inspired. But when you do feel grounded and nourished and protected, then you have the strength, that inner strength to do what you need to do to feel good. So that is a $67 value and you get it completely for free for signing up for the shadow work course as well. And I totally get it. We're very, very busy. I know that you guys are busy. So you might be saying to yourself like, yeah, this work sounds really good, but I just don't have time to focus on this type of self-study. And I completely get that. But here's the thing. Shadow work actually makes everything else in your life so much easier. The truth is most of us are expending our energy. If you think of energy like money, and we often say that, right? Time is money. Your energy is your money. It's currency. 
It's this current of energy that you are just expending outward, getting caught up in your old patterns and worrying about the same things that have troubled you for so long. By doing shadow work, you're freeing up that energy and you're harnessing it back for yourself. And imagine what you can accomplish with your life and how you will feel when you wake up in the morning if you have all of that prana back for you, if you have all of that power. The other great thing is um, you get lifetime access to the entire course. So you can always pick it back up and you can redo certain exercises. You could redo all the exercises. You go at your own pace and you get lifetime access to all the bonuses as well. One of my students, Linda, says, the course encourages us to look into our corners, find our edges, and learn to see it all with compassion and humor. The voice inside can soften, and the acceptance of exactly who we are can emerge. It's a beautiful process of self-discovery. So, for, the, for less than a cost of a weekend getaway, a yoga retreat, or one month of therapy sessions, you get those eight dynamic online lessons that are based on our time-tested, proven practices. You get five powerful guided meditations, journaling and creative exercises to break through your limiting beliefs, your shame stories, and your energy blocks. Included in the course, you get those gentle yoga and pranayama practices, two of those. And that'll help you embody the shadow integration work. So it's not just up in your head, but it's more in your energy field as well. And that's when a lot of these shifts can, can start to take deeper root. You will also gain access to a private Facebook community of like-minded souls, which will help keep the momentum going. I have a Facebook community manager, Carmen, who is amazing. And she's basically going to be going on the Facebook group weekly live and going through one little exercise or one piece of each of the weekly modules so that if you do want that extra boost of accountability or momentum, uh, it's nice because you can always go in either while she's live, you can always ask questions, or you can just always watch the replay too. That's fine. The replay is always available and it gives you a sense of community and connection as well. I am always available as well. You can always reach out to me personally. I am here to support you every single step of the way. I go in the Facebook group all the time too and do live meditations and live Q&As to support you on your journey. And that's not just, of course, for the duration of eight weeks. It's, you know, for forever, basically. Uh, and again, you get lifetime access. Um, and also, I want you to be able to join this course feeling confident and risk-free. So you, I do offer a refund. I offer a 100% refund. The only catch is that you actually have to complete the course. If you go through the whole course and you feel as though it didn't meet your needs, that it didn't help you, absolutely no problem. I will refund you fully, 100%. If you are a yoga teacher, you also get 12 Yoga Alliance credit hours. You get those non-contact CEUs that you can use. Um, and you get three additional credit hours for the bonus course for the Prana online course as well. So that's technically 15. So, okay, you might be thinking at this point, all right, that sounds fine, Melissa, just tell me what the price is. So here you go. <laughs> you can pay a one-time payment. The normal price is $444, but I am offering you 20% off, which is 355 and of course that still includes the access to the Facebook community, all of the live sessions with Carmen, all of the online course materials, and the bonus prana course as well, which is worth $67 on its own. Um, or you could do the payment plan, five monthly payments, which would normally be $97 a month with your 20% off discount, you get $77. And I will just say that you know, this is the second time that I launched Shadow and Light. The next time I launch it, I won't be offering the prices this low. So if you do feel like this material is resonating with you, then I highly encourage you to go ahead and join us now because you can get the best of both worlds. You can go at your own pace and you can also utilize all of the live online sessions in the Facebook group to kind of feel like you're also part of a group. Um, all you have to do is use the code MAGIC at checkout. I'm gonna send a follow-up email to all of you with 
the login info, but you can also find it on my website. If you just go to the yoga writer.com, then you get, uh, you can just check it out and check out more course details. If you want to look back over the weekly outline or anything else, um, you can also just make those purchases straight from my website and I'll send you the checkout info in the follow-up email as well. And the, your, your 20% off code is magic. Yay. Because shadow work is magic. So again, when you break through your unconscious blocks and your limiting beliefs, you gain these massive insights into your psyche and into your soul. This allows you to possess the ability to receive more abundance, to radically accept and forgive yourself. It gives you a deeper understanding of yourself and others, and it invites more positive synchronicity into your life. So I wanna thank you guys so much for being here, for joining me this evening. And I am just so grateful to all of you. If anybody has a question, you can always type in the chat box and I am available to answer any questions that you have. Um, and I just wanna thank you all so much again for taking this time. I will also send out that replay link. So if you wanna rewatch this, if you wanna do that journaling exercise, digging into your shoulds and shouldn'ts, you can absolutely do that again. I highly encourage you to explore shadow work, shadow integration practices, because it can make such a tremendous difference in your life. It can change your life from the inside out. All right. I will just type in here my website link, theyogawriter.com. You can always just go to that link. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. And I, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions at all, I'll also type in my um, email here. Please just feel free to, you can always shoot me an email and you can just ask away if you have questions about the course, if you have questions about shadow integration practices, then please feel free to hit me up. I so appreciate all of you and I hope you have a peaceful evening. Thank you so much.